I decided to rank all 12 CDL teams. It feels like an impossible task because they've only played a couple of matches, but it's always fun to see if teams prove you right or wrong. This is obviously pre-patch, so we'll see if some teams adjust to the new patch, but as it stands right now, this is where I have every team. And also I give reasoning in this video as to why I placed them in each tier. Go ahead, take a look. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you agree or disagree with this list, because I was looking at Reddit after I did it on stream and a lot of people did not agree. Let's rank the CDL teams on their first couple weeks performance. Uh, obviously there's been a patch, so things are going to change, but as it stands right now, this is where I'm gonna rank these teams. So first things first, starting with Atlanta phase. You already know what's going on. And we're live while we're doing this with a five gifted from Venge. Venge. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you, bro. Uh, so we're gonna start with Atlanta phase, put them in S. I mean, obviously Atlanta phase is disgusting. So, I mean, we all know what they're capable of. Top three, death taxes in Atlanta phase getting top three. We all know this from every single year. I feel like Draza was a pretty big upgrade uh, from Slasher. Not that Slasher's not great, just that Draza, he grinds the game a lot more than Slasher does. He's obviously way more aggressive. He can bail them out of situations with his gunny. And that's something that, uh, you know, it, it can only benefit you, right? And he's also a great search and destroy player. So I think the team's gonna be dominant. And I have my uh, friend here, Rich, thoughts? Uh, they're the only S tier team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they're that's his thoughts there. Every uh, year. They can't keep getting away with it. They can't keep getting away with it. All right, let's go. There we go. Uh, Boston Breach. I'm going to put Boston Breach. Yo, hold on. I got to come back to Boston Breach. Um, also, guys, the Heretics logo is just not on here. So just look at Florida as if they're Heretics, right? Um, for Heretics, ah, we've only seen them play like Royal Ravens and... You know, Legion, yeah, so rocker. rocker, but they smoked all of them. Um, I'm going to put them in B just because they've separated themselves from the bottom. Um, it's actually shock out phase have only won once in two years. I mean, yeah, it's tough, but they've been unbelievable, bro. Like a top three is it's really hard to win an event it just happens. Uh, but yeah, so for heretics, I'm going to put them in B because they've separated themselves from the bottom by like a pretty good margin. Um, and they have like that passion that you just can't emulate. Like, it's like those guys are just so hungry. You know, they just got over here. Like, uh, I'm speaking from experience when I got like my first big opportunity about like how that hunger actually helped me beat some teams that like have been beating me for years. And I don't know, like they're all in a facility together. It's new to them. It's exciting. It's the camaraderies there. Like they have like that, that, like outside mental edge against teams. And I think it's gonna work for like the first event or two. Um, and they're vibing. So Viva Heretics, vamos. Yes, sir, Ali. So I'm gonna put them in B. What I do think that they they could be A, but on this list, it says should win an event. Um, I didn't make this by the way. So I don't, I don't really love the presentation of this, but we're gonna roll with it for the video and for the narrative purposes, you know? So for them, I'm gonna put them in B, could win an event. Can't put them in should win an event yet because of their past, but. All right, so for Legion, um, I'm gonna put them in C. Won't win an event. I just think that that team is gonna get team diffed in a lot of situations. I think they're relying, gonna be relying heavily on two, three, five. Um, and in S and D in this game, you can watch crosses, a little bit more traditional of a search and destroy game. Teams with like solid players, like they're, they're not gonna just be awful at S and D. Like it's, it's gonna be difficult to lose all your searches in this game. Not gonna be able to guarantee it as much. Uh, like every once you watch one team play S and D, you can just basically copy literally everything that they do in a game like this. Like it's not a situation it was like MW two was where like sound played a factor. It's so like you had to be kind of like a savant situationally if you were a sub and stuff. You know what I mean? Like your intuition had to be there. Everybody has covert sneakers and stuff now, so like you can basically copy everything anybody does. Like for example, in MW two, like let's just say I was still active pro, right? There, I cannot do what Shotzi does with a sub. I'm not, I can't get close to personal. I'm not making the same type of deady plays. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like some players need to get the jump on somebody like in that. And in that regard, they need cover sneakers and things of that nature. I can't copy what people do in this game. You can copy what people do really, really well. And I think that that's something a lot of people haven't talked about, which I'll probably dive deeper into as the season goes on. But that's definitely something to think about, especially with S and D. That's how Crim6 and those guys got so good. They were already nasty, and then they would see what everybody did, and they would just take the best stuff. 
All right, for Royal Ravens, I'm just gonna they're just in D, bro. Like they got, they got some figuring shit out to do, bro. They need make. <laughs> Never mind. I was gonna make a stupid joke, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, though, they do have promise. Um, it is December. It is really early. I do think that Gwyn is disgusting. I think Rial has a lot of potential from like a cracked standpoint. I think he has Gunny. Clay has shown promise with putting up a lot of damage in the last couple series. Got Rex. He's like the stoic, like holding down position type guy. I do foresee them possibly being the first team to make a roster change just because they are getting heavily team diff. They're trying to play that same type of game and like be good at hard point and stuff. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't foresee that them being able to contend with phase and new york and optic and stuff in hard point so yeah i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with d for them uh for lag i'm gonna put them in i'm gonna put them in b i feel like also i'm gonna put these in order of like where they are in that tier two i'll come back to my reasoning for lag i just gotta see how this list pans out for for rocker I think I'm going to put them next to Lee. I feel like, I feel like Rocker just have not looked good. Their roster's just weird. It's like, like Rocker has two, like, kind of like slow, like playing for killish type ARs. And like, I don't mean that in like a super negative way, because if you have an accuracy on your team, you kind of want him to do that. But like, he doesn't do it like as, I guess, overtly as like Awakening does it. And it's, I don't know, it's just weird. It's going to put people in situations where, like, they shouldn't be. And, like, Vivid's, like, solid, but, like, he's not. He hasn't been playing like the Vivid that I know from the last couple of years. I don't know, man. I don't, I just don't love the construction of this roster. Um, maybe they'll prove me wrong, but usually Lamar's teams are really fundamentally correct. And I just don't know if he has the right comp to, team comp to be that fundamental correct type team. So I'm gonna put them in D. I just don't like what I've seen from them. Um, Seattle Surge. I'm gonna put them in A. I think awesome. Seattle's really good. I really like the roster. I like their coach. I like Abuza. I think Abuza is really good, especially in the comms. His English is fantastic. I'm gonna put them in A. I think I think they're a top six team. With like, honestly, honestly, I think we have five top four team. Or yeah, I think we have five like top four teams. Yo. Does that make sense? I think like, honestly, on any given day, you know how they say any given Sunday in the NFL, it's the same thing with COD, bro. Any given day with the top teams. And I think that Seattle is in that group. I think they might have like a slightly lower ceiling because of like how talented Optic and FaZe are uh, in Toronto. But I do think that they're, they're a solid team. No one is saying Surge is going to win an event, respectfully. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this construction of this list, I didn't make it, but like, I don't know, if, if that was the case, then there would be like three teams up here. You know what I'm saying? So I guess if we're going by this list, though, I do kind of have to put them at the top of B. So I guess I'll just put them at the top, top of B. Um, yeah, because you're not looking at them like they should win one, but they could win. Yeah, could they could win. win. Oh, yeah. In that case, then LAG got to go down here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said I was gonna come back to him. So alright, uh for should win an event. Uh yeah, I think I think for could win an event, Surge is a good spot. They're probably at the top of the list of could win an event, low key. Alec can't hang with Bruce and MC. He doesn't have to. Dude, that doesn't have to be his job. In this game, you don't have to like hang with the other player on the other team, bro. And actually, hold on, rewind. Not attacking you, uh, just the statement. You don't have to hang with the other guy on the other team. Is the, like you don't have to go ban like bar for bar with those guys. That's not how COD works, bro. Like in that case, like people could say that about every single team that the Optic Dynasty played. You could say that about, and they lost a lot. Any team that Complexity played, you could say that about. Like they lost too. Like you don't have to hang like go bar for bar with the talent of the other team. That's part of what being a Call of Duty team is finding ways to win. And I will also say, I think these guys can hang. I think that, like, Hook is nasty. I think Alec has, like, shown that he's gotten better from last year. And Illy obviously shoots really straight. We've seen what he's been doing. So I think that's just, like, kind of, like, not a true statement. All right, for Optic, I'm going to put should win an event. I want to, they just haven't won, like, a ton. And 
I do think with Kenny though, like this is a completely different like he's about to turn this franchise into a really, really good team. I think Kenny's unreal as a leader, as a player, the plays that he makes. We've are bro, we've saw three games and we've seen Kenny ice up and literally win them two of those games. I'm it's coming down to the skid rows. Like if Kenny doesn't make the plays that he made at the end of those skid rows and P2 or in back junk. I know some of you guys probably didn't watch the match. Just trust me when I say this. Kenny made two game-changing plays, bro. He won them that game one against Seattle. Then he did it again in their next match. If they, you don't, like, he makes those type of plays, it changes the whole trajectory of the match and changes the, the franchise like that. That is like the perfect guy that Bruce and, and, and Shotzi needed, bro. They needed a guy like that, and they got him. So good on them for going out and grabbing him. And I do think that Optic... Will likely win an event, but I'm just gonna put him in should because I don't know. I, don't, I like it's it's tough right now to put them in the same category as like FaZe and New York. So I'm gonna put New York up here. My next one, I think these teams are just Hydra still, in my opinion, the best player in the game. They are just too icy, bro. At the end of the day, we count everything counts in terms of wins or losses, right? They got a late start. People saying they weren't that good. They come into the league, they win game five, round 11, round two, uh, or game two, round 11, like round 11, round 11, clutching up by themselves. Like there'll be two V three situations, two V one situation in control. Like they're just winning their games by any means necessary. And that's all that matters. Wins or losses. New York is a S tier team. They have all the, all the players that they need. They like, they play without judgment from their teammates, which is fantastic. Their fan base doesn't like, they, they don't have like a ton, ton of fans. So they don't like, you know what I mean? It's, they don't have to deal with like a ton of criticism for individual performances and they all trust each other. Like for Kismet, he's going out there. If Kismet drops a 10 and 30, bang, onto the next map. You know how great of a mindset that is to like have that type of trust in your teammates to know like they're not looking at you sideways. Like, damn, he just costed us that map. Like he knows without a shadow of a doubt, nobody's looking at him like that. So he's just making plays to make the game easier. That is an underrated aspect of a team, bro. I've been on plenty of teams where like, damn, I'm trying to win, but also like, damn, if I get smoked, like, I know I'm about to hear it from my teammates. Like, it can affect like certain situations, I'm telling you. So for New York, I'm putting them in S. They have a great team dynamic, good coaching staff, and they have the best player in the world on their team. So, all right, for Toronto Ultra, I'm gonna put them in A. Five out in the finals of the world championship. They... You know, make a roster change. They look better in the first couple of games. And then what happened in that last match? What happened? So I'm going to put them in A. I think we need to see a little bit more, especially against a top team. Um, obviously, that match just was like, that was an idea. I mean, we broke a record for like worst performance. Um, what is going on in the chat right now? I'll, 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 I'll give you relationship advice after this video, okay? Um, next one, LA Thieves. I'm gonna put LA Thieves. I'm gonna put them in C right now, bro. I'll put them right, right uh, at the end of C. Oh, in the ahead of Legion. I think LA Thieves are like, uh, I don't think they they can win an event, bro. That's why, like. Thieves are like the weirdest team to place. They have such a weird roster. They have so much potential. They they seem like they're gonna be like this all year, inconsistent, like an underdog threat, like a dark horse that can beat a top team, but then just kind of like fold. Damn, I don't know if I want to put them. LAG look way better than Thieves, but I don't think LAG can win. I don't think Thieves. Can. I gotta put them here. I have to put them there, especially because of like the individual players' history as well. I have to put them there. I think that plays that definitely plays a factor rather than these first three matches. Um, as well as these first three matches, excuse me. All right, for Boston, I'm gonna they could easily be here at the top of this. And I know that they're one and three, but I'm gonna put them B, and here's why. Performance the perform this is probably my most controversial take in this video, but the performance from Boston in that last match showed me that they can fix their issues. The performance versus phase, the game five, they probably realistically in their heads think they won that series 5-0. That's how close it was. Obviously, they did have a couple of bad matches. They did lose to LA Thieves. But Boston, to me, 
with the history this is what plays a big factor the history of the individual players on that team world championships i think they have a good enough roster to stand like the test of a call of duty season that can improve as it goes on and i do think that this patch after playing with some of the more punishing spawns and things of that nature will give them more to play with in their map pool so for for boston I'm putting them B. I think they could. I can see it. I can see them winning some SDs, upsetting some respawns. Snoopy makes some big plays. Slasher has an amazing tournament. Priest is back in Priest form. Like, I can see them winning. They have a rich history. Their floor is super duper low, which is why they're at the bottom of B. Um, I, I would say my most controversial takes in this video are probably LA Thieves, C, and Boston, and B. But I do think that this is like a really good list. Bays, New York, Optic, Toronto, Seattle, Heretics, Boston, LAG, LA Thieves, Legion. I think this is a pretty good list. I ain't gonna lie. Let me know what you guys think, man. Uh, obviously, this is gonna be on YouTube as well, as well as live on Twitch. So everybody on YouTube, leave a comment if you think that this list is solid. I think this is a pretty good list. Um, it was a lot harder to do with these uh, will win an event, should win an event, and stuff type uh, categories, but I don't know. Like, the reasoning for some of these teams, I could see some people having some gripes with, but oh, I got, that's the thing I got to change. I got to move that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's a lot better now. I do think Minnesota can be up a tier, but from what they've shown and my personal opinion of their co uh, team composition, it just doesn't work. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Final answer right there, guys. Uh, leave a like, comment what you guys think of this list, and send me screenshots of your list. I'll put a link to this tier maker in the description. Much love and appreciation. I'll see you guys in the next video.